I've thought about how to teach this uh, many different ways. Uh, I guess that's the privilege of being able to do it many times. And um, I remember thinking, so here's, here's what not to do as a teacher. You're like, I understand it like this, so therefore I'll just explain it like this. That's like committing suicide for a teacher because by the time you understand it, you will explain it in a way which is actually not very helpful for people who've never met the idea before. Okay? So, this is what textbooks do. Um, and it's also what the programs do. There's, I'd actually would like you to get these five steps down. Um, to get to these trigonometric uh, functions and their derivatives takes a lot of work. There's five, at least five, distinct steps that uh, each build up on one another. Uh, for example, you get sort of results from here, and then you use that the next step. It's like one of those awful exam questions where it's like part A, and then the next bit is like, Hence, uh, you know, using part A, do this, blah, 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 and then, you know, by the time you get to part F, you know, your ears are bleeding, etc. Um, but there is logic to it, okay, in that each subsequent step uses results that you develop in the previous steps, okay? The problem with it is, um, we're trying to work out the derivatives of a function like this. This is sine x, right? And you might as well draw that, by the way, while you're waiting. Um, sorry? It says squeeze law. There's a legit mathematical law called the squeeze law. We'll get to it. Now, here, here's the way it works. In a textbook, you're reading this, right? And it starts off saying, we're going to differentiate some trig functions. And then it starts off having nothing to do with calculus at all. Um, and then it introduces this weird thing with inequalities, which is like, why, why are we doing this? And then you eventually get to first principles. And then they say, okay, here's the result, we've proved it, we've derived it. Now look at it, and you're like, oh, it makes sense. Okay. Now I think that's exactly backwards. Gentlemen. I think this result, sorry, this order is exactly backwards. Okay, so it starts with all this abstract stuff, and you're like, what does this have to do with anything? Okay. So I'm going to take this order and almost completely, I still have to do 2 and 3 in the same order, but everything else I'm going to flip on its head. So I'm going to start at 5 and I'm going to work all the way back up to 1, okay? But to do that, because I told you, each step relies on the previous steps. So when we're doing, say, step 4, okay, that's an important one, I'm going to use the result that we're going to have to prove in earlier steps. But I'm just going to show it to you and I'm just going to sort of say, look, it works. Uh, let's not worry about why it works and the exact mechanics of it. Just Stay with me and we'll prove it afterwards. Okay? So, here's where we're going to begin. Apply some intuition. Let's just use our brains, okay? Here is sine x. So, uh, let's see, where should I write this? Y equals sine x. And as you'll see shortly, we've got three basic tree functions, right? Sine, cos, tan. If you work out sine, you get all the rest. Okay? It, it, it's really quite simple. So, if we can work out what's the derivative of this thing, what is, what is its gradient function, then we're off on our way. Okay. So, things to notice. Um, I've only drawn part of sine x, yes? Uh, I've drawn it from 0 to 360, which is one period, okay? But there's more to it. I could keep going, but I don't need to. Why not? Why don't I need to draw any of the rest of this graph? There's already more values. Because I've got a whole cycle of it. Um, sine and all the trig functions are what we call <coughs> periodic, right? Namely, um, they repeat over and over again over a given period. It's periodic. So, being that this function is periodic, it's repetitive, I'm going to say, therefore, the derivative of therefore the derivative of this function, which is just describing its gradient, uh, must similarly be periodic. Does that make sense? Because all the derivative is telling us is gradient, okay? And if this is what the function is doing, it's, it's gradient will be doing the same thing. It's going to repeat over and over again, okay? So there's the first thing we know about it, that whatever result we're going to get for the derivative, it's going to be a repeating function. And that narrows it down quite significantly, okay? Now, what else can we see about this graph? Well, a gradient is easiest to illustrate when you think about tangents, okay? So for instance, I can put some tangents on here, like say at this point, that would be a tangent, right? And here, there'd be another tangent. 
These are the particular spots, x equals 90 degrees, and x equals 270 degrees. Okay? Now, seeing as those tangents, at least if your drawing is pretty decent, those tangents are horizontal. What does that imply about the gradient at those points? Zero. It's zero, right? Uh, a horizontal line, it's flat, there's no rise. So the gradient, I'm going to plot it on in another color, in green, okay? Mm -hmm. On the same graph, the gradient function should be zero at 90 degrees, and it should be zero at 270 degrees, okay? So I'm trying to pin down, what's this, what's this thing doing? Okay. Now, that's not all. I can also say, as I I'm go from zero up to 90 degrees, okay? You can see the gradient is positive, right? Positive, positive, positive. Those are plus signs if you can't quite make it out. Okay? So therefore, whatever gradient function I've got from 0 to 90 degrees should be positive. And it's not just any positive, right? It's most positive, steepest, if you like, at 0. And then it gets progressively more shallow. So the gradient is something steep here. And it's approaching 0 at that point. Okay? So, the gradient here is positive and decreasing. What about in this middle section here, between 90 and 270? Okay, how would you describe it? The gradient is, what sign is the gradient? It's negative, right? Because it's a decreasing function. So, negative all the way through here. And it's not just negative, we can also say something about its magnitude, right? It starts at zero. And it's a little bit negative here, because it's still quite shallow up here, right? Where is the steepest point? Where is it most negative? When it crosses. When it crosses, namely at the axis, right? So actually not zero, but actually 180 degrees, right? That's the value I, I'm interested in, okay? So, what have we said so far? Um, it's zero here, it gets progressively steeper, and then when it gets to here, it starts to slow down again. And it starts to get less negative until it comes back to zero at this point. And then the last bit is really much like this. It's positive, 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 and it's the most positive at that point. And then the whole thing starts over. So what kind of a function fits these kinds of things, these kinds of characteristics? You've 90 degrees here, 270 here, okay? It's got to go down, then, sorry, yeah, down, and then back up again, right? And it's got to be periodic, okay? So if you draw it in, uh, and by the way, you can actually show by measurement that the gradient at the steepest points, it's 1 here and negative 1 here. Okay, so the gradient is actually equal to 1 at that point. Right? It's 1 here, it's positive, and then it's decreasing until it hits 0 at this point. Okay. Uh, where do I go up to? Here. It's 0, sorry, negative, negative, negative. And at that point, the gradient function, the green line, is most negative. That corresponds to the actual function sine being the steepest in the negative direction. Okay? And then it does the reverse over here. It's still negative, but it's less negative until that point. The gradient function, the green one, is zero, which corresponds to a horizontal tangent. And then over here, uh, it's positive, and that's the steepest. That's the highest it gets. Now, what's this green function? This green function is cut, right? Okay, so um, we can say the derivative of sine x, well, it sure looks like cos x, okay? Um, it seems to tick all the boxes. 